Hi guys, Shelly of Hairscapades here with a tutorial of my um, braid to twist out. So, um, my hair is freshly washed. I washed it with Olaplex number three uh, for shampoo. Actually, I did a pre-poo first with Olaplex number four, number three. Then I shampooed with Olaplex number four. I detangled with Herbal Essences Hello Hydration. I then deep conditioned with a mix of um, Olaplex number five and a um, Matrix Biolodge deep conditioner. Probably for about five minutes I deep conditioned. And now I have Kimmy Tube leave-in in my hair. And actually my hair is barely damp now. Um, and I just took it out a little while ago. So now I'm gonna get ready to do a very simple braid and twist out. What I usually do is I will put four Two in the front, two in the back, and two here. So a total of eight twists on my head, not a lot. My hair may look thick, but it's relatively, um, it's relatively fine strands with some decent density. So it looks thicker than it is. Okay, so because my hair has dried some, I'm gonna dampen it up a little, not a lot, but just dampen it a little to make it easier to um, part and prepare for the twist and I will use a rat tail comb. And what I'm actually gonna do before I um, start applying any gel, because my leave-in, my Kimmy Tube leave-in, which is in my IGTV GTV videos, my um, leave-in is acts as a moisturizer um, and it has oils and sealer. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of more silicone or silicone to control um, the silver hairs, which do tend to be more wiry and um, I just, you know, I put a decent amount, I don't know if you can see it that well, but I put a decent amount on and I'm just going to put some of the silicone onto my hair to help smooth, tame the silver some. Um, so I transitioned to voiceover here. I'm going to start parting my hair. I split it from front to back about the same size and then each section from front and back I will split into two more sections so um, as you see I have a front and back section and now I'm going to split that in half and clip the top out of the way to work the underside of the section I will after this, start applying my aloe vera gel, which I use the Lily of the Desert brand, which unfortunately is like expensive as all get out right now on Amazon because everyone is using this as a hand sanitizer um, base now. I have three bottles of this that are half or almost completely empty, but I had enough to get my hair done. And as you see, I smooth the mount down it. I will brush through with this little pink shampoo brush, which I got from Sally's for about 99 cents. I found that I like this brush better than the Denman. The Denman felt like it tore up my hair and also I just felt like it wasn't as stable. So I'd like this little cheap brush that I got from Sally's for 99 cents. So now you'll see that I braid down about five turns of the braid and then I will split the middle section in two and twist the rest of the way down the length. Um, I will try to get a thicker section in the middle when I split it so that my sides are more even. I don't make perfectly even splits in the braid, but I try to even it out with the twist. And um, then I will just repeat this section by section. Um, one thing I will note is that in the speed, you don't see necessarily that how I am brushing through, but I start from the bottom and work my way up the length of hair, as you see here. And sometimes I get a little bit caught up in it and have to work through it. I do think it's probably time for another trim because it did feel a little rough on the ends. Um, and again, I will start braiding it, uh, from the roots, about five turns, and then split the middle section in half and start twisting. I like to twist 
forward. I like the way the curls look when they are twisted forward for some reason, so I do twist forward on either side. I think my daughter had walked in and asked me something at that point in time. Um, I'm trying to think, oh, um, and now I'm working the back section. As you see, the parts are not that neat, but again, about five turns down with the braid and then I start twisting. I was going to note that you see, I don't brush it again when I'm twisting. I, a lot of times I do see people um, brushing as they go down to try to keep it smooth. I just try to finger comb it down and keep it smooth. It isn't as smooth as people who keep brushing the sections as they work it down. Um, I do find that sometimes I have little bubbles in it, but they don't bother me enough to worry about it. Oh, there's my beauty spoon because I was low on gel and I love these things. This brand isn't out there anymore, but I know you can get them on Amazon, but they let me scoop out every last little bit of that gel to get it in my hands. <laughs> So here you see I am finishing up the last sections. I know a lot of people work from back to front. I work from front to back. I tend to always do the front for some reason. Get it gets it out of my way. Um, so it's easier for me to get to the back. Uh, as you see there, you see I'm doing some brushing on those ends. One thing I will note is that I forgot to put silicone on the other side. I thought I had done it on both sides and then I was looking at this footage and realized I had only done it on one side. But funny enough, the side without the silicone, which is um, the Sally's GVP Skinny Serum is what I use. The side without it is actually sleeker. I think I got it wetter and I used more of the aloe vera gel. So it was just sleeker, tighter, it didn't puff as much. And you can even see it in my after picture, my side that's more silver is um, not quite as defined and a little bit frizzier. So I know next time to just, you know, wet it a little bit more. I thought about redoing it, but didn't feel like it. So here I'm using the um, Design Essentials Foaming Pomade. That helps lock in the hold. I just started experimenting with this a few months ago and I really like it. I started getting it for my edges but um, I've been using it for, actually for winter's edges and I use it for me. And now I'm using gray perm rods wrapped in end paper. I always use end paper on the rods because otherwise my hair will snag. So this sheets the ends more gently. And you'll see that I roll it all uh, up a significant amount and I didn't have enough end papers or rollers so I had to go back in there to get more of them. <laughs> um, so again, there's eight twists total, four on each side. Uh, sometimes I will do about 12 on each side where I'll do two in the top sections and uh, one at the bottom section to have three in each section. So a max of uh, 12 twist. Um, but again, end paper really good and I roll it up really pretty high up on my hair so that I have really nice brow curls on the end and it lifts the length and you can see the difference between my hair and this set versus when I don't... Um, roll the ends. Here I'm putting a hairnet on to keep my edges down. And now the next day it was air dried all the way and releasing the curls. I will use some Shea Moisture Raw Shea Elixir on my hands for the takedown. So you'll see me grabbing that bottle next to spray about three to four spritzes of the oil onto my hand and rubbing it down the length of my hair and on my ends to release. I've been using this um, raw shea elixir for a very, very long time, probably early on in shea moisture hitting the scene. So I like it, it's a nice light oil. It isn't too greasy for my hair. Um, it doesn't seem to pick up a lot of lint. So I've liked it um, as a very light natural oil. Um, better than using coconut oil or olive oil, which is a little bit too heavy. Coconut oil, I find it makes my hair crunchy um, on dry hair. I used to use coconut oil as a pre-poo or add it to my deep conditioner, but it was getting washed out. So um, oil, coconut oil, I do not use as a sealing oil. Some people love it. It just never worked well for me as a sealing oil. But this raw shea works very nicely for me. 
and you see my ends are getting tangled a little as I try to uh, release it but what's great about the braid to twist out is that it naturally separates the hair I don't do any additional separation beyond what happens with the unbraiding of the top section so you start with the two sections but then as you get to the braid part it starts separating I think it gets to five or six sections I guess about five sections it becomes because of the three and the two um, and so it just is less frizzy when I separate. I don't have to manipulate it to get it to a decent fluffiness. It's not huge, as you can see, but it's separated enough for my wants. And then it'll just expand as it ages, as it starts airing over the day. The aloe gel is very light, so there is no cast on my hair. And the foaming design, the same, the foaming, the... Design Essentials Foaming Pomade, it doesn't leave a cast, so my hair is not hard at all. And so I'm just trying to fluff it a little, give it a little bit of volume, but not mess with it too much here. All done. Um, I will let this just be flatter and it will grow. Um, the one thing I do do at night that you might be interested in is how I put it up at night. I will either loose sleep on it or I will do something like this. Keep the curls on top and then just clip it. Like, like that. And then tie a scarf around the, um, the edges. So, you know what? <laughs> Let me get my scarf. So I'll take my scarf. And we'll tie it like this um, to preserve the curls on top, but keep them off my head. So that's my bedtime routine for a tip. Hope you guys found that helpful. Bye.